Hey dolls, it's Marilyn Morose. That was my old emo name. Um, <laughs> if you can't recognize me from all of this, then you probably haven't known me for too long because I grew up during the emo era. This is going to be my last video tutorial using the My Chemical Romance Hip Dot Eyeshadow Palette. And seeing the colors in here really took me back to these days and I had to recreate my old makeup. Before we get started, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel as well. If you have any other ideas of content that you would like to see from me, make sure to leave your comments down below and let's get right into this video. The wig that I'm using is from Amazon and it was actually curly before I straightened it with a steamer cut the layers into it already with scissors and softly tease through it twice. This is actually the third time that I'm going to be repeating these steps over so I wanted to show you all the detail that goes into this emo hair. I'm going to give you a quick 360 of all of the hair just so you can see the basic shape that I'm going for. I added a lot of choppiness to the top layers but I made sure not to cut it too short because I want to get the framing right for my face shape. And when I turn it to the side you can really see how that base teasing that I did made this hair really wide. So in this final styling session, I'm going to show you how to create all of the little details that make emo hair what it is, just like we used to do it. I'll be focusing on razoring the ends and creating height in the hair. Since I'm working with synthetic hair, I'll be using an extra hold hairspray along with the razor that I actually use for my eyebrows. Back in the day on my real hair, I used to use a razor comb, but this will do on the synthetic fibers. And you'll also need a teasing brush. I'm not aware if this little side bang piece has a name for it, but basically these are the little pieces that you would want to stick into your face. So I'm going to be lightly shearing off the edges and thinning out this section because in order for it to lay properly, you want it to be pretty thin. This wig is pretty thick at the front, so I just really need it to be thinner than it is now. I know this isn't a proper wig form, but this is all I'm working with, so it's a little harder to tell where the layers are going to lay. I'm just lightly working from the top to create the spikiest hairs by my part. For the top layers, I hope you can tell I'm really hacking away at them. I want to make them short. And then once I get to the middle of the hair, I'm lightly just shearing through till I meet the ends to give it all a nice blend. Using this razor method will also give a good texture to the hair to make it all spiky. The shorter that you make the layers in the back, the bigger it can actually get, and I like for the spikes to kind of stick out. So you can see I'm repeating all of my steps, hacking away at the top, and then blending the bottom. Once I'm happy with the amount of texture and the length of the hair, I'm moving on to the back combing. I'm starting off by sectioning out my face framing pieces, which is going to be this whole side bang, because this section actually takes the least amount of teasing. I'll be styling it once I have my makeup on. To begin the back combing, I'm using all the hair around the part to smooth over all of my knots later on. So this is the section where I want to add the least amount of tangles. I'm keeping all of that back combing really tight to just the root, and I won't be adding any hairspray for this section. It should end up looking something like this and just the surrounding hairs around the part. As I mentioned before, I already went through and added like a little pre-tease for my hair just so I can focus on the styling. With the first two teases, I didn't use any hairspray at all. So I'll be focusing on pushing all of that previous work all the way to the root for some added height and locking it into place with the hairspray. As you can see, I add a little bit of hairspray all around the root. Then with the teasing comb, I pack all of this knotting down towards the track. The sections that I'm working in aren't too big, it's about a square inch all the way around because I really want to focus in on packing all of that into the biggest mound of nest that I could possibly make. It should end up looking like this and next I'm going to show you how to smooth everything over. I'm taking out the softly teased sections around the part and I'm going to use this to smooth over all of my back combing. I'm spreading the soft tease layer all over my other work in order to conceal my nest. The idea is to pretty much smooth everything over so I'm not really brushing every single bristle down to take out the knots. 
just gently brushing everything over for a smoother finish. Another tip that I would give in order to keep this glorious height is to watch the direction that you're brushing out in. I'm actually just taking my brush and pointing it straight up and over the back combing. And for the final touches, I'm blending down the back of the hair with my fingers and sort of weaving the T-sections with these softer edges. And to spike it out a little bit, I'm just adding a light coat of the extra hold hairspray. I'm just doing some light styling. I'm going to finish it off at the end once I have everything completed. I went ahead and applied my wig. Ooh, it's like popping out of place. I haven't styled it yet, but um, I remember back when we were emo, we used to, I used to sleep in with bobby pins like this to train the bangs to go exactly in the position that I wanted. Some people would wear it out like this with the pins in there, but mine actually did stay and hold, so I'm just going to be leaving that and hoping that this trick works to like mold the front of the bang, and then I'll show you how I style them all the way when I'm done with the makeup. I don't think I've ever gotten this much height in my hair, like my natural hair. So this is definitely my dream emo hair. It's really long. You can't really see because I'm kind of cut off because we're doing the makeup now, but honestly, I'm so excited for this video. Since I applied my wig, I added foundation around my forehead and I don't even know why I did that because when you have emo hair and the bangs and everything with little pieces, you can't see your forehead, so um, I'm just going to go in and clean that up. And the foundation that I'm using is the ELF Flawless Satin Foundation. I actually didn't start wearing foundation until I was like my junior year of high school because up until that point, we had like PE and stuff and I was very acne prone and very oily. Pretty much the same way I still am now. So with this application, even though I want to be true to like what I used to look like, this is still a makeup look, so I gotta put on some foundation. This one is nice and sheer though, so you can still see my natural texture and a little bit of my imperfections. But I really like how this foundation evens out my redness. And I actually used to use this back then too. When I first started out wearing makeup, it was honestly whatever was in my mom's bag of makeup. But I know for sure foundation was something that I got for myself. I feel like I was definitely at the end of the cutoff for like the emo era. I was friends with a lot of older people, but I definitely remember my journey starting in elementary school. I was like dressed in all black in the middle of summer in my hoodie and my ballet flats. And I remember a teacher asking me, aren't you hot in all of that? And I would always refuse to take off my hoodies. I grew up in Vegas, so like, it was so hot. I think it's so funny how we used to like literally refuse to take them off. Even recently, as an adult, I had gone out to the club. I remember there's this one guy that I used to see around like at Warp Tour, and he was at the club in the middle of the dance floor in a hoodie. <laughs> like even now, we won't let it up. I don't have the eyeliner brush that I used to use for my brows anymore, but the brushes that I actually used to use were the Eco Tools. Um, these double-sided brushes. I love double-sided brushes, so with the My Chemical Romance collect, so I was super excited when in the Hip Dot collection, this is my sister, so I'm not allowed to touch it, but she gave it to me so I can show you guys. I was really excited to see that it came with a double-sided brush because this was genuinely what I used to use, and I love them. I know a lot of people are not into them, and this one is specifically cool because it has a little protection with some end caps. This used to come in a set of two and I unfortunately misplaced it. I have no idea where it is. And anyways, ever since it kind of got updated, I mean, I was using these like 10 years ago. They weren't even the same anymore anyway, so the closest that I could come to is this uh, Moda Pro Angle Shader Brush. And I used to use something like this to contour my nose and do some eyeshadow, even back then. And um, for my eyebrows, on the other side, it just had a really long, wide angle tip. I will be using the My Chemical Romance palette once again just because this is very accurate to what I used to use. Um, I remember I tried to look it up and see what was the name of the palette that I used to repurchase and use back then and it was called the NYX Cosmetics like a la mode or like Love in Paris, something like that. Um, I'll put a picture of it around here but it just had a really gorgeous matte gray, black and brown and then some white and more silvery shimmer colors too. 
all it was missing was the red. So that's why I really love this palette because it is a really accurate representation of what emo makeup was back then. And to continue with the accurate representations, my brows were not it. They were not filled in. If I did, it was just the ends just to round them out a little bit. I love using eyeshadow in my brows. Since my face is so oily, having this powder product kind of like absorbs that and helps keep away the shine for as long as possible. I hate having to like scrub off my eyebrows sometimes. If I need some industrial strength eyebrows, it'll usually be for like a special event. I don't for every day, I just like eyeshadow. Before middle school, with my emo-ness or whatever, everyone had side bangs and layers. It was just to like what extreme you took it. And me, obviously, I had to have the biggest hair, the spikiest hair. Um, and my hair was really long too. It was really pretty when I first um, got it done, or before I went to go get it done. It was really traumatic. So basically, I asked for a really short top layers, you know, like obviously like they're tiny little hairs at the top and then to leave the length and my hair was really long. But the lady really messed up my hair and I ended up coming out with, I called it like a mushroom haircut. I looked like I had a bob, no layers, just one straight cut. I asked for layers, I got a layer and just two sticks. It was so, so bad. Ever since then, I started cutting my own hair and I believe I didn't have that hair for too long because I just took a razor to it and started shearing it out. It was just a response to having that terrible haircut experience that I got really creative with my looks for the first time. So for my eyes, I'm gonna be doing my signature look from back then and I used to call it my panda eyes. I mean, we all looked like raccoons, and me specifically, I had black and white eyeshadow, and I used to use a black and white base. So I'm just going to be using the NYX Epic Wear Eyeliner. This one is in pure white, and then my favorite black pencil is the Extreme Lasting Waterproof one by Essence. So I used to use pencils as a base. I'm going to be sketching out my graphic eyeshadow. Makeup brushes weren't really a thing back then. So my makeup wasn't graphic by choice, this was all I had. <laughs> I'm creating sort of like a cut crease shape. And like the first third of it is going to be white and then the rest is going to be black. My first ever, ever, ever makeup look that I posted was just some eyeliner. And I did a really pointed inner corner and wing. It was like super curly, it looked really funny looking back at it now, but actually it wasn't that bad. Eventually I did get to go when I was getting into middle school shopping for my first clothes of my own and I remember my sister had this little friend that told her that we should go to Hot Topic because she loved all of her things and um, she used to wear like really cute necklaces and band shirts even like in elementary school and I remember my dad took us to our first trip to Hot Topic he got me like this really cute spiked choker. It was a leather one. It had twisted wire metal and then it had the spikes looped into it. It was really weird. Even though I didn't grow up with a lot of money, I still found a way to like go through the clearance racks and find things that were really unique or like obviously they were on clearance because nobody wanted them so I had a lot of wild things. Whenever I got band t-shirts I remember my mom used to throw them away. I used to have to hide them from her. Most of the time my band merch came from concerts and my first ever concert was at the mall. They had uh, like Journeys used to do these tours. I saw Seosin uh, and my dad took me. He was really supportive of like all of my music endeavors and I was really into music back then. I played a lot of instruments growing up and he did pass away so all of this stuff kind of reminds me of him. And like it means a lot to me because he was a part of it. So I just created a really rounded shape under my eye and on my outer corner and I'm gonna just quickly blend that together just a little bit before it sets. Anyways I'm going over this with eyeshadow so it doesn't really matter. Growing up in Vegas one of the other major festivals was called Extreme Thing and oh once I got into middle school and made my friends we used to go there we had so much fun going every year. Do you guys remember like going to shows, getting in the pits, and the next day at school having your wrist bracelets and talking about how sore you were from being in the mosh pits? Like, that's so childish. Once I got to high school and people were still doing that, it was kind of weird. 
like we were in danger girl what are you talking about one of my favorite extreme thing memories is actually seeing Gerard Way um, his wife performed one year with mindless self-indulgence her band and he was just hanging out there and I saw bandit their kid running on stage with the Aquavats it was like the cutest thing ever and of course getting to see suicide silence I got to see Mitch Looker perform he was honestly the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life and recently since I got to move to LA I one of the first things I did was go visit his grave it's so beautifully well maintained by his family and he meant a lot to the community especially to me because even though I did like a lot of different genres of music even within the emo scene there was metalcore there was post hardcore it doesn't sound like they're different like you could just say they're screamo but they're not my favorites were suicide silence and dance club massacre i don't feel really comfortable sharing band recommendations not in like a weird gatekeeper way but with hearing how many of the people from the scene men specifically were like Predators. It's hard to separate the art from the artists sometimes, but like at a certain point, it's like you gotta make some exceptions. Some people are just terrible. Just because I haven't kept up with them, I don't know like who is okay. Being from Vegas, Escape the Fate was like everything to us. The one that crushed me the most, but I wasn't surprised by, was Ronnie Radke. And as terrible as he is, he's so problematic now. I do still listen to them. Like I can't let it go like dying is your latest fashion is the soundtrack of my youth so I can understand when it's hard for people to kind of let go I feel bad every time I listen to it but at the same time it's really nostalgic and special to me not because of him but because of the memories that I have I'm gonna go ahead and set my eyeshadow using the white and black in here serpent Sun and flock of doves so after everything that ended up happening with my dad we had to move and my new school had uniforms and before I moved, I had like this crazy pink hair and I had like purple underneath. I had to take it off and after that is the first time that I did my split hair. And like keep in mind, I was doing this all myself. But eventually I fell in love with makeup more. Since I had to wear uniforms, I thought having my split hair would be a good and like natural color option to still be able to have something cool. I used to wear this Twolaha hoodie, and if you don't know what that is, it's to write love on her arms. It was a foundation, and they used to have like all the different band members at Warp Tour like hold this sign. It was about like suicide prevention and raising awareness of self-harm. I remember that year from my back to school, I was so excited that they started carrying their stuff inside of, I think it was Journeys? Uh, I don't know, but it was like some skater brand. And I used to do this exact makeup with my split hair and I used to wear like big flowers in my hair. Oh my, I used to make like those big Melissa Marie millionaire's bows and the hoodie that I got was great, of course, my favorite. One of my big flexes though back then being in the scene was um, I actually dated this girl and her brother actually directed the Escape the Fate video for Not Good Enough for the Truth in Cliché. It's not like the music video music video. If you're a fan, if you were a fan of Escape the Fate, it's like the one where they're out in the mountains. I can't believe how much I'm talking about Escape the Fate. I honestly like don't like them at all anymore. So when this girl told me that, I mean she was definitely like not into all of the alternative stuff herself. So she didn't really have a reason to lie. And I looked up like the video and looked through like the other uploads and I saw her in one of the videos. I was like, whoa, like she's not lying. I'm actually gonna take the gray shade in here and blend in between the black and white a little bit. Just a little bit. There was no blending back then. Honestly, I probably just did it with my finger before, but since I have this in here, I'm gonna use it. One of the other things that really stuck with me from back then was just being a huge music nerd. Now I'm really into post-punk and like goth music and synth pop but back then even though I didn't I wasn't familiar with the gothic subculture a lot of the fundamentals of that music like the use of synthesizers with like winds of plague and especially motionless and white they were definitely my gateway into the gothic subculture when you think of like the 2000s and the 2010s everyone was really obsessed with like One Direction or even in the 90s girls had like their in sync and everything Mine was motionless, and like that was my boy band. <laughs> That's so weird to say. But yeah, their their use of electronics, and especially like their references in their songs, really helped me figure out what am I. <laughs> 
this is my makeup i'm gonna add some lashes just some small ones i didn't wear eyelashes back then that wasn't until high school either and actually i'm gonna be using the house labs pen liner just to seal the ends of my brows because they're already getting oily and especially with all this hair on my face i'm gonna be like straightening my bangs into my face like i used to um i don't want them to smear one of my favorite concerts was getting to see Bring Me the Horizon. It was at the Mandalay Bay House of Blues. And I remember right before the show, they were actually having a tattoo convention right next door to the concert. So um, one of my friend's dad, he was alternative as well. So he took us to the show. And one of the things that I will never forget is going to that tattoo convention and meeting Sabina Kelly. She's like a tattoo model. I think she was the host on like some tattoo show. I don't have any tattoos, which is weird, especially with considering how much I love like all of the elements of the alternative scene. Tattoos is not really one of them. But I remember being like about 13 or 12 and getting to meet her there. I just remember her telling me that she thought I was pretty and like seeing this like gorgeous person tell me that. It never really clicked to me like I could be beautiful. Like it's not in like, oh, oh I was ugly kind of way because I never felt like that. I didn't really up to that point put any value on that if that makes sense but hearing this lady tell me that was like when it first really clicked in my head that would have never happened if I wasn't going to see Bring Me the Horizon and that concert specifically was so cool they had their name in lights like BMTH and these really beautiful like kind of showgirl lights if somebody remembers what tour this was I need to know because I want to look it up and see if it's on YouTube or something because it really felt like a movie that day I don't remember the name of these lashes. They're really tiny though. I didn't want them to like enhance the look too much. I just needed something there. I'm just going to go over the lash band to hide all of the glue real quick. I pretty much had the time of my life during this era of me being emo. And I think that's one of the major points of why I have so much nostalgia and love for it. I'm going to line my lips using a brown lip liner. This one is by NYX. It's actually an eye pencil. And then the concealer lips. So this CoverGirl concealer, it's in the shade Light Pale. That's the one I'm using anyway. And I think my mom had this in her bag, but I saw it and I thought it was a lipstick because this is the color that everyone else's lips were back then. And ever since CoverGirl went cruelty free, I've been trying some of their products out. So I'm really glad that I can still use this and that it still exists like this is old and it's actually really good coverage the lip liner was more of like lashes and foundation kind of thing to glam it up we didn't wear lip liner with this concealer lip when I think back at it I was growing up doing all of this alternative stuff with a lot of other minority people like that were also alternative and it makes me so like upset to see like there's not any representation really or opportunities given to us in all of this revival stuff and that's one of the main reasons like why I'm doing this. I know there's a lot more of us out there. I'm gonna take down my bangs and style them real quick. I try not to use a lot of heat on my actual hair so my straightener is really embarrassingly old. I haven't gotten a new one since I used to have my hair like this. So I'm, I'm not going to show it on camera. But I'm just going to pull this over to the side and straighten this right into my face so that it's nice and tight. And then with the bang here, you want to make sure I'm going to have to like do it into the viewfinder because I don't have a mirror up here right now. But basically what I did is tease from underneath the bang so that it holds the shape. It should be sort of like a swoop. And then you're just gonna spray it so that it holds like this. I hope that makes sense. Honestly, emo hair tutorials are so fun to watch on YouTube. I wish that I could like just sit here and do my hair, but this is a wig. But I'm just gonna go through and fix this and show you the completed look. And this is my authentic emo hair and makeup transformation. Next I'm going to show you what I used to wear. 
I think this outfit is a really good representation of all of these years from me in elementary school all the way to like the late 2010s. I used to wear pants just like this. They were by Trip and had some like pleather cheetah print. I would use a Hello Kitty tote bag back then, but this is the one that I actually wanted and I thrifted it. Ballet flats were a staple for me and I cannot tell you how many I have destroyed through the years. This era awakened my sense of DIY and I used to love shredding up my shirts like this. And I was super excited to repurchase my Tuolaha hoodie. I got this smaller one so I could wear it a little more modernly with big pants. This necklace reminds me of those acrylic Kiki Cannibal diamond necklaces. I got it from Dewberry's in Las Vegas. And the rest of my accessories are from Hot Topic. This AFI necklace is from back then and honestly it's my prized possession. This is how you would have found me in the corner of the band room with my friends or walking down the hallways with my headphones on listening to all the music I downloaded off of YouTube onto my 160 gigabyte iPod. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my authentic recreation of my old emo makeup. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to my channel as well. If you'd like to keep up with all of my makeup looks, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Merlin Mugby. I'll see you next time. Bye.